So, come on, mail on Sunday. I'm sure Mr Sunak spat his cornflakes out <laughs> on the floor of Checkers or the Dowding Street flat when he saw this rumoured uh, plot by backbench Tory MPs for the return in a dream ticket of Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage. Now, you are very, very close to Boris. You worked for him back when he was Mayor of London and, in fact, you were head of communications during the fall of Rome, may I say, when, when Downing Street uh, was slightly falling apart. How likely do you think this is? Um, I haven't discussed it with him, just uh, put cards on table on that one. And I'm not sure it's a dream ticket because he doesn't really need Nigel Farage. In fact, he needs uh, the opposite. But it's an intriguing prospect. And as I understand it, it's not being shot down by people who are officially speaking for him. So uh, it's at least uh, left to hang. And I think what it does, Jake, is just remind people that, you know, the party basically turned on Boris Johnson. He wasn't taken down by the electorate. He wasn't taken down by the opposition. He was taken down by his own MPs. And they thought it was all chaotic. Well, what has happened since? What has happened to big decisions? What happened in that brief tenure with, with Liz Truss on the economy? And then what's happened more recently, the cancelling of HS2, the abandoning of net zero commitments, uh, the Rwanda policy going to pieces. It's not as if it's actually got any better. And party unity, if anything, is worse. So I... I totally understand that there are people uh, on the back benches who are now wondering what on earth were they thinking when they toppled the man who got 14 million people, most of them who had never dreamt of voting Conservative before, uh, in places like the north of England and the north of my native Wales, to sort of topple this man who had that magic touch. Now, the, 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 the sort of electoral stardust, Boris, and I don't, I don't think his pot has yet run dry, but there's a lot of ground for him to make up. And of course, last week we heard from him at the COVID inquiry, reading the national newspapers, talking to people on the street in my local pub in Rosendale and Darwin. I thought there was a bit of a feeling out there from people who were at least still receptive to him. A lot of people have turned against him and will never change their mind, that he did really, really well. And sort of, one, I think people are very glad that he started with an apology, but also proved that he was over the detail, was completely um, in touch with all that was going on in Downer Street, despite this sort of reputation that people try and peddle him about him about not being a details man. Do you think that's helping him rebuild his reputation? Yeah, I think we somehow he slipped into a position where he was like a Christmas pantomime villain and people would then just just shout you know liar liar pants on fire um they assumed that he was an idiot they assumed he didn't do detail they assumed he wasn't across uh, anything a serious journalist was asked me was he literally on the piss all the time when you were in number 10 i mean anyone who spent time with him like uh, your me knows that he's a bit of a loner he's not particularly a party animal he absolutely does detail and he works you know extremely really hard and i think what last week did show, maybe belatedly, was that here was a man who wasn't indecisive because he wasn't capable of understanding the science and all that. He was pondering massive decisions. The decision to lock down was a £400 million decision. Anyone who takes a decision like that without testing the arguments that were made to him from different directions and conflicting priorities, without testing those arguments really aggressively, is not fit to be in that job. Boris did wrestle over this. He did go around in circles a little bit because you had to. The stakes were so high. And I think anyone watching with an open mind last week would have would have seen that. And if you are objective, you'd think, actually, he really cared. He was trying to do his best. It was an unprecedented and horrific situation. Nobody had the right answers. And actually, he got a lot of the big calls right. And if he if he did make that comeback, do you think he, he would have the right answers? Have you spoken about what his new recipe for successes? Would it be a return to levelling up or would it be a different vision for Britain that we'd hear from him if he returns to Parliament? Well, funny enough, the, the new recipe would be the old recipe, as in the recipe that was offered to the British public in the last general election when they voted in unprecedented numbers in recent years for a very personal branch or brand of the Conservative Party led by Boris. So yes, it's levelling up, it's not neglecting the north of England, it's building infrastructure is actually putting more police on the streets it's actually putting more you know doctors and nurses in hospitals so that you know so that uh, we can cut down waiting lists we had a global pandemic that got in the way of that but that's what people voted for that's what he would like to get back to and so he's massively frustrated to see hs2 
being truncated. He's hugely uh, frustrated to see net zero commitments that were well underway and had given a clean sort of signal to business to go forth and invest in the new technologies and to get Britain at the uh, at the forefront, not following behind others on this. So that's what it would be. But I think it's a very long shot for him to come back, even though if you think of it constitutionally, Jake, it would be going back to the person that people voted for. And normally when people vote, they vote and, and, and offer a four to five year mandate for a person at the head of a party to try out the pitch that he or she made to the public without being toppled by a stab in the back. But Ghetto, with all opinion polls showing uh, in recent times that the Conservative Party is about, on average, 20 points behind, pointing to significant Labour victory, and in fact, with polls showing this weekend that the number of Conservative MPs could be reduced to about 150, this might just be a sort of a last Hail Mary from some of those Conservative MPs who are <laughs> going to lose their, their seats. But if they succeeded in that last Hail Mary and by some, I don't know, electoral contortion and shenanigans, Boris came back to Parliament and then became leader of the Conservative Party and Prime Minister. Is he a man who could still unite the Conservative Party, which seems more divided now, even than when he was Prime Minister last time? It's a really good... That's almost like a £400 uh, billion pound question uh, in itself, I think. And I fear that the appetite for self-harm is now so strong in the Conservative Party that they can't unite behind anyone. And it's not impossible. People used to say, how could Boris be leader? He's not even in Parliament. Well, that was easily resolved last time around. He ended his stint as Mayor of London and came back in. It's obviously a, a hugely long shot. And, and actually more relevant, I think, I, I think it would be extremely difficult and probably not very attractive to him. I think he really is sort of... He's moved on, at least for the time being, and he's got other things to do. So for me, the only game in town at the moment is Rishi Sunak to get his act together, to play to his strengths, to offer what he has to his party and to the country, somebody who's hardworking, clean living, understands global finance and economics better than most, and just get on with sorting out the economy, getting us beyond COVID, take advantage of the opportunities of, of new industries and all that, knuckle down. But... When he does this macho man stuff, I'm not going to see the Greek Prime Minister, or I'm going to challenge you all on small boats, it's just not credible. He's not that kind of alpha male, and it just makes him look ridiculous. So he needs to up this game, and the party need to get behind him. And in that situation, A, we can look forward to a year that's not wasted, of trying to sort of sort out the problems of modern Britain, and B, the Conservative Party will have a fighting chance at the next election, maybe even of scraping a victory, but certainly not going down... Uh, in a ball of flames. At the moment, we're heading for ball of flames.